Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 4.6 of Masking Parallel Programming series, we are diving deep into task continuation. This concept is essential for anyone looking to master async programming in C Sharp. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX that is parallel framework extension libraries in C Sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn task continuations. Task continuation demystified. First of all, let's understand what task continuation are. Imagine you are doing a series of tasks one after the other. Sometimes you want to start a new task immediately after finishing the current one or only if the current one succeeds or fails. This is where continuations come in handy. In programming, especially with tasks, continuation allow you to define what should happen next after a task completes, fails or even gets cancelled. Okay, so let's understand it with the help of examples shown over here. Here we have two tasks, task 1 and task 2. Task 1, I am just printing first task into the console window with the help of console.writeLine statement. And task 2, write second task into the console window right after task 1 finishes. So here, task 2 will wait for task 1 to finish and then print second task. And if you notice over here, I have written task 1.continue with. So the continue with method ensures that task 2 starts right after task 1 finishes. And here, I have written ANT, which is nothing but the antecedent argument that represents the first task. So you can access its result or check for exception. Here, I am not accessing any result or any exception. What I am doing? I am just printing second task into the console window with the help of console.writeLine statement. And if you write like this, then task and their continuation might run on different threads. How we can make sure that task and their continuation run on same thread? There is a solution for that. What is the solution? Solution is we can make sure task and their continuation run on same thread by using task continuation option dot execute synchronously when we call continue with. So this can make our program faster for a small quick task by reducing unnecessary thread switching. Okay, let's understand it with the help of examples how we are going to use task continuation option in execute synchronously when we call continue with. So here again we have two tasks, task 1 and task 2. Task 1, it is just printing first task into the console window. That's what I have written. Task task 1 is equal to task.factory.start new. Here I have written lambda expression. Inside the lambda expression, I have written console.write line first task that is going to print first task into the console window. And then I have used task 1.continue with. Here I have written antecedent argument, which is nothing but the ANT symbol over here that goes to console.write line statement. First argument, I have printing second task. And here, as a part of second argument, I have written task continuation option dot execute synchronous. That is making sure that task 1 and task 2 are going to run on the same thread by which we can reduce unnecessary thread switching and thus improve the performance chaining task with data. We can also chain tasks that pass data from one to another. Now, let's look at a more complex example shown over here where tasks pass data to each other. Here, what I have written task.factory.start new and lambda expression that goes to 20, right? So here, the first task returns 20. Then I'm just going to continue with, I'm going to access the first task result. Then I'm adding 5 to it. So this second task are going to give the result as a 25. Then third task, where I'm just going to continue with, where I'm just going to access the second task result. And then what I'm doing, I'm just going to use SQRT version of it. So what I have written, ANT goes to math.sqrt. Here I am going to write ANT.result. Here basically I am just going to access the result of the second task and then I am going to perform the SQRT operation on it. Right? What third task are going to give? It is just going to calculate the square root of 25. It should give the result as 5. And task number 4, what I am doing? I am just going to access the result of the third task and printing into the console window with the help of console.writeLine statement. So this chaining of tasks can significantly simplify our async workflows, making our code cleaner and easier to maintain. That's what this chaining task with data is important. Multiple antecedents. Here I have written multiple antecedents. Do you know the meaning of antecedent? 
antecedent means a thing that existed before or logically precedes another. So here I am referring antecedent to the previous task. So we can wait for multiple tasks to complete before starting a continue. So let's understand it with the help of examples on over here. Here we have two tasks, task 1 and task 2. Task 1 basically printing task 1 complete statement into console window with the help of console.write state. Similarly, task 2 prints task 2 complete contains into console window with the help of console.write state. And then I have written where continuation is equal to task.factory.continue when all. Here I have mentioned array of tasks. So how we are going to mention new array task 1 comma task 2 and then finally what continuation task is going to do that's what we need to mention as a part of second argument that's what i have written task goes to console dot write line all task done so here task 1 and task 2 run concurrently the continuation run only after both task 1 and task 2 are done so here i have written continue when all we do have some other alternatives also like you know continue when any you can synchronize multiple tasks efficiently and ensuring that our program waits for necessary operation to complete before moving on. Okay, so now we have understood the concept. Let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of efficient task continuation. So the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named task continuation demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system.threading, using system.threading.task. Then there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. First of all, I'm just printing this statement into console window. What I'm printing? Efficient task continuation demo. So in this program, whatever I have covered the concept of, you know, task continuation, I'm just going to cover in same example. So here, if you see, task and their continuation might run on different threads. So what is the way how we are going to write? efficient approach, how we are going to make sure that task and their continuation will run on same thread. So for that, I have written code and then I'm just displaying how to use chaining task with data. And then finally, I have used multiple antecedent tasks, how we are going to perform. So every concept I'm just covering into one single example. Okay, so let's see it from the start. So here, first of all, I'm just printing task and their continuation might run different thread. How we are going to write the code where task and their continuation might run on different threads. So here I have written two tasks, task one and task two. Task one, what I'm doing, I'm just using console.write line statement that is going to print first task into the console window. Task two will get executed after completion of task one. That's what I have written task one dot continue with that is going to make sure that task two will get executed after task one completion. And here what I'm doing, I'm just writing lambda expression. That's what I have written a and t goes to console.write line second task. So immediately after completion of task one, the second task statement is going to get printed into the console window and task one and task two might run on the different threads. Then what I'm doing, I'm just making sure that task two wait until task two gets completed. Then only the other statement is going to get executed. Then what I have written efficient approach task and their continuation will run on same thread when we use task continuation option dot execute synchronously with continue with. For this, what I have done, I have written task number three. That's what I have written task task three task dot factory start new here again lambda expression that basically prints first task into the console window and then task four here I have written task three dot continue with console dot write line second task as a first argument right in the continue with method and then second argument I have written task continuation option dot execute synchronously that is making sure that task three and task four will get executed on the same thread. So this option task continuation option dot execute synchronously it is just making sure that task three and task four will get executed on same thread that improve the performance. Why it is improving the performance? Because it is reducing unnecessary thread switch. Then I have written chaining task with it. Here what I am going to do, I am just going to pass one result of the task to the another result with the data. How we are going to do that? For that I have written one simple example over here. Task factory to start new, lambda expression goes 20. So this first task returned 20. Then I have written continue with. Here I am just going to access the result of the first task and then I am adding 5 to it. So this second task is just going to give me 25. 20 plus 5 is equal to 25. It is just going to give me as a result of the second task. The third task, I am just going to access the result of the second task. Then I am what I am doing, I am just going to perform a square root operation over there. That's what 25 a square root. I am just going to get the result as a 5. That 5 
number I am just going to print with the help of final task. So I have written console dot right line calculated result and result that is going to print five number two console window. Right. This is how we are going to pass the data between the chain of task. Right. With the help of multiple antecedent task, what I am going to do task five and task six are going to get executed concurrently. Continuation will wait until task five and task six gets complete. Right. Once task 5 and task 6 are done, then continuation will execute their own operation. That's what here as the first argument we need to mention of task of array. That's what I have written new array task 5, task 6. And this is the second argument where we are going to perform continuation task operation. The part of continuation task operation, I'm just printing this all task done into the console window. So that's how this program is constructed. Let me go and execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appear into the console window. You see, efficient task continuation demo got printed. Task and their continuation might run on different thread, right? The first task got printed, second task got printed. Efficient approach in that we have used task continuation option that executes synchronously and that is going to make sure that task and their continuation will run on same thread. That's what first task and second task are going to get printed with the help of same thread. Then chaining task with data. Here, final result I'm just printing into the console window. That is calculated result is equal to 5. Then finally, multiple antecedent tasks. Task 6 and task 5 are running concurrently. Once this task 5 and task 8 gets completed, then only the continuation task is going to get executed and that's how this all task done got printed after finishing task 5 and task 6. Okay, so that brings me to end of my session today. To sum up, in today's video, we have seen that continuations allows us to define sequences of tasks where each subsequent task starts based on the completion. This is useful for creating complex workflows in your application and managing dependencies between tasks. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.